The Jared Dillion Show. I'm Jared Dillion. This is The Jared Dillion Show. If you want to call to talk about your money, please call 844-305-7800. That's 844-305-7800. This is The Jared Dillion Show. Well, I have some news for you guys because we've been talking about Bitcoin on and off for the last year. I bought it in September 2019 when it was about 10,000 bucks. I just sold it over the weekend. I sold it for 40,600 and um, I sold it on Saturday. As you may not be aware of this, but Bitcoin trades 24 seven, even on the weekends. So I sold it over the weekend and I tweeted about it after I sold it. And the tweet just said, I sold my Bitcoin. Well, the tweet went bananas. It got 1,600 replies and 5,000 likes. Now, the Bitcoin community did not take too well to this tweet. It was nonstop abuse on Twitter for 24 hours. And these guys, these guys, you know, it's a cult. And I knew it was a cult when I got involved. And, you know, you can make money in cults. You just have to get get out. And all these guys are going to be holding on to it forever. So today, Bitcoin got down to 30000 So it went from 42000 to 30000 It was down about 25 or 30%. And, you know, in terms of great trades that I've ever done, this is probably in the top three. It certainly is the best out trade I've ever done in my entire life, the best time I've ever sold something. The timing could not have been more perfect. So... Yeah, the Bitcoin people are not as happy, and uh, they still think it's going to go higher. I don't really care at this point because I am out of the trade, and I made a bunch of money. I can buy a lot of things with the money I made. You know, the Bitcoin people believe that you don't want dollars. You want Bitcoin because someday we're all going to be trading stuff in Bitcoin, and I just I don't, I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. Bitcoin is a cult. And (laughs) I encourage you to go on Twitter and find that tweet where I said I sold my Bitcoin and look at the replies and you you cannot come to any other conclusion that it's a cult. You cannot come to any other conclusion. So all the cult guys are going to hold it forever and the chance that it goes to zero someday is not zero. It can definitely go to zero. There's no intrinsic value to Bitcoin. There's no intrinsic value to gold. There are there really is an intrinsic value to stocks and bonds because they have cash flows, they're securities, but when it comes to commodities like Bitcoin and gold, there there is no intrinsic value. So yeah. Yeah, these guys they're going to do the round trip. So by the way, speaking of cults, Tesla is also a cult. That stock is a cult. And you can make money in cults. You can make money in an investment cult, but the key is to leave the cult at the right time. You can't stay in the cult until the better end. Do you remember that uh, that Adam Sandler routine about the cult? That's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. The night time is the right time. You know, the cult people truly believe their own BS. And the Bitcoin people believe that one day we will have Bitcoin instead of dollars and we will be paying for things with Bitcoin. Bitcoin makes a pretty crappy currency. It's not really a currency. It's an asset. It's a digital asset. It's not a currency. And it's an object of speculation. And I speculated in the object of speculation and I did so successfully and I turned it into cash. And I'm going to turn the cash into food. Actually, I'm probably not going to turn the cash into food. I'm going to turn the cash into cars. We live in the United States and we have dollars. That is our currency. And that's not going to change. That's not going to change. And there is some possibility that we have a digital currency in the U.S. someday on the blockchain. But it's going to be a centralized digital currency, which means that they're going to be able to print as much of it as they want. So, you know, if if the U.S. digital currency becomes the dominant digital currency, what does that mean for Bitcoin? And I said that I sold Bitcoin and a lot of the Bitcoin guys were like, you bought dollars like what an idiot you are, because everybody knows the dollar is going down. And that is true, which is why I also own gold. And gold has been around for 2000 years and it's going to be around a lot longer than Bitcoin. I can tell you that. 
And yes, I truly believe that to be the case. If we end up with a digital currency on the blockchain, it is probably not going to be Bitcoin. It is probably going to be something from some centralized authority, which defeats the entire purpose of Bitcoin. Anyway, I'm not really like a crypto expert. I'm not smart enough to predict the future on this. All I know is that we're living in 2021 and we're all using dollars. So I'm going to exchange my Bitcoin into dollars. Now, the number one question I got after that was, am I going to buy it back later at a lower price? Well, you know, I'm a trader, and if I think there's an opportunity, I'll buy it. But, you know, the transaction fees are really high, and I'm, you know, probably not. I'm probably not going to do that, not unless it gets down to about 10000 or so. But if it gets down to 10000 it means there's something wrong. My days of trading Bitcoin are probably pretty much over unless there is some kind of amazing opportunity, and I don't think there will be any amazing opportunities. I generally have no desire to go back into a bad neighborhood. I don't like trading the same thing twice. I just, I don't really like doing that. I, I'll trade it once, I'll make money or I'll lose money, and then I'll, then I'll, it, I hate trading the same thing twice. But the point of this exercise is that there is a time and a place to sell everything. There is no asset that you would hold forever. There's nothing I can think of that I would want to hold forever. Not a stock, not a bond, not commodity or anything else. Now, I have held gold for 16 years and I'm still not selling. Though someday I will. Gold is meant to be sold. Everything is meant to be sold. You do not hold on to everything forever. I was talking to somebody today and he, this guy said that his neighbor held Amazon and Netflix and one other stock. I can't remember the other one, but Amazon and Netflix. And he's still holding on to them. And, and this guy said, you got you to gotta sell someday. You know, you, you got to do it. And I get it. I have said before that figuring out when to sell is the hardest thing in the world. Figuring out when to buy is the easiest thing in the world. And I get it that stocks go up over time. As I have said before, the worst sin in the world is to sell too early. I'm very, very leery of selling too early. But as we saw with Bitcoin today, it's also a sin to sell too late. So how do you know when to sell? If you feel yourself getting excited about a stock, like really excited, then it's time to sell. You are a human being, and human beings get excited by higher prices and demoralized by lower prices. So you want to do the opposite of what your instincts tell you to do. The minute that an investment seems the most attractive, the minute that you are getting excited about a stock, that is the time that you should sell because we get excited by higher prices. And if you're positively giddy on a stock, then you should absolutely sell it. Now, I don't always do this. It, there's a stock that I own, Beyond Meat. It got up to $200 a share. I was super, super excited about it. I thought it was going higher, and I didn't sell. I didn't sell. I had the opportunity to sell, and I didn't sell, and I'm wearing it. It's down to $115 a share, and I am wearing it. There is a time to sell everything. There is no asset that you want to hold forever, not even Bitcoin. Which brings up an interesting question. Is there a good time to sell stocks or do stocks always go up? Like, do, what about the stock market as a whole? Is there a good time to sell the stock market as a whole or do stocks just go up forever? That is a philosophical debate that rages on a daily basis. Now, there have been a couple of periods in history where stocks did nothing for almost two decades. Okay, so from 1929 to 1946, stocks went nowhere. From 1969 to 1982, stocks went nowhere. 13 years and 17 years, two periods of time in history where stocks did not go up. And that would be very, very frustrating. It's, and, you know, in 1982, I can tell you in particular that people were so devastated by the stock's refusal to go up. You had, you had a cover, I think it was Business Week, had a cover that said the death of equities, which they published in 1982, that the stock market is never going to go up ever again. And people will believe that. 
I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon. That's a long time to be hanging out in stocks in a bear market. I'm not saying that's going to happen now, but it wouldn't surprise me in the least if it did. I mean, the thing that people were worried about is actually happening. Right? I mean, what what were we worried about? Democratic control of the government. That's what the stock market was worried about. And you can, you know, I, I don't think it's the end of the world, you know, but you can bet that there are going to be some stupid economic ideas that get implemented. And I don't have a big enough imagination on that right now. Anyway, if you haven't sold Bitcoin yet, I think it is going lower. It's kind of in a no man's land right now, but I think it's going lower. I think it gets down to at least 20000 And if you could sell it on a bounce up to 35000 I would consider that a victory, but I doubt it gets back up there. And this is a key point. Bitcoin is a proxy for risk in the market. So if Bitcoin's going down, that means that other risky assets are going to follow soon. So that means that Tesla and the ARK funds and SPACs and tech stocks all this risky stuff in the stock market are probably going to go down as well. We are going to see speculation come out of the market pretty quickly. And as far as Tesla goes, that stock could easily get cut in half and still be super expensive. I, you know, I don't think we're going to have a bear market per se, just a reduction in speculation. By the way, uh, Bill Miller, the manager of Leg Mason Value Trust, the kicker was when he said the higher Bitcoin goes, the less risky it gets. That was the point. I knew the trade was going to work. I'm Jared Dillian. This is The Jared Dillian Show. The Jared Dillian Show.